Okay, YouTube, we're back with um, some results, and I've had several people request that wanted uh, a more vivid description of what was in the box. It's really not that impressive, but here's what what is contained within the box. Um, I've told you before, this is uh, this is what carries the main distribution, the main power signal that goes to the reactor. Um, I guess if I wanted to stress anything from the experience I've had was take the time to solder everything. Um, the crimp-ons just, I mean, with even with a good pair of clines, um, they just don't do that well of a job. Okay, um, as far as the circuit that takes care of the um, hydrogen reactor, there's a 40 amp relay located on this side below this fuse panel. Um, this is what carries the main power to the reactor cell. Right in front of the relay, actually if we took the power in from the battery, we'd flow it in this way. It goes into a 30 amp auto reset breaker. Comes out of the back side of the breaker into the relay, um, from the relay, um, out to the ammeter, the external right here. Uh, from that to a lug, and from the lug um, to the reactor. Um, I also want to stress the importance of not using any kind of the enclosure to make your electrical connections. Even if you feel like it's a hard product, you're using PVC or um, acrylic or whatever, it's better to um, have a long enough bolt, make a connection here on the outside, run it through, you can connect it on the inside. And that way you're not uh, making the electrical connection by squishing the container because heat will tend to soften the material and um, uh, that's how you melt stuff. I've done a few of that. Okay, back to the box. Um, good grounding lugs. We're running a main ground cable it comes over to the frame of the vehicle uh, the positive cable feeding a 50 amp fuse comes straight off the positive side of the battery um, this device here is a nitrous oxide stainless steel solenoid it's used just to provide a positive lock between the um, canister that has the distilled water that would be utilized to refill uh, reactor cell. So it's just basically a normally closed mechanical area to where the um, hydrogen cell can't draw through the pump and back into the bottle, which had done that on me before. Uh, this device here is just a time delay relay. There's a float switch, a simple float switch mounted in the reactor. And if I were to hit a bump going down the road and that float switch made contact, it would bring on the pump and um, uh, attempt to uh, add distilled water to the reactor cell. And if the level was where we wanted, we certainly wouldn't want that. So really all this does is it has to remain energized. Uh, the float switch would have to remain energized consistently for a period of approximately five minutes before it will energize this relay and allow the pump to come on. Um, all that is is just a safety device. It looks fancier than it is. The only reason it's in this nice little circuit board was I couldn't find a 12-volt time delay relay. I found 24-volt relays and some very high-dollar ones, and this was a $7 kit from um, a local electronics shop. Um, the shunt that's down here uh, comes in off the negative side of the battery. All of the negative um, from the reactor on um, run through the shunt so I can measure the amount of current with the digital ammeter located in the cab of the truck. Um, there's another relay mounted underneath this time delay. It provides a circuit um, for the uh, circulator pump that is used to circulate to cool the reactor down. Um, and this green light is simply one to tell the system's on and then I have the key to lock out. Uh, you know, it normally on and it would operate with the engine, but if you ever wanted to lock the system out to prevent anybody from tinkering with it, you could simply lock it out and it wouldn't operate. Um, that pretty much is uh, hopefully an explanation um, better than I'd given before um, of the box. Let's move around to the cab.
Okay. Um, I managed to run almost a half a tank of fuel through the truck today. And I had posted mileage of 31.3 on the uh, on the last attempt. And uh, I'm down from that a little bit. I got um, about 30.5. Um, also, the amperage draw, the electrolyte, must be a little bit too stiff because even with the um, uh, with the tower cooling system, the amperage is you know 33, 34 amps is just way too high to be running um, comfortably. Now, what I have done since the last time, I've I've tapped in. I had several people ask me about the oxygen sensor controller. Um, I've tapped in to the leads and hooked up just a simple DC voltmeter to show um, basically what I've done. When I had mentioned I'd adding 0.3 volts, um, which leans the circuit, this is basically the circuit that allows me to be able to do that. And I think is um, about as rich as you can run it. Um, it's close to a full volt. I mean, it's lean. Um, but it gives me the ability to sit here and to play back and forth. And I've not found a sweet spot. Um, I've been running approximately about middle of the dial. And I've set the dial um, for where the engine seems to perform the best. Um, besides that, all in all is pretty good. I need to get the um, electrolyte solution um, tied down a little bit tighter. But otherwise... Um, can't complain. Keep you posted. Peace.